Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Cole and I meet with interesting people like Bill Jordan. Hey, hey, interesting Bill, people. Well, thank you. I'll try to be interesting today, if at all possible. Well, thank you. Oh, you're always interesting, but I've got something that I think you'll find interesting, and that right. is, I noticed, uh, you know, we're we're all grandparents here, and it's a wonderful thing, and it's great to see the grandkids grow up, and they, they go, today, it's sports, sports, sports. Everybody's involved in sports. Everything's organized. I mean, my daughter is driving the three kids to one sport and another, and she's She's become a chauffeur, okay? So yeah. what I miss, and tell me if you agree with this, I miss sandlot baseball. Mm. I miss pickup games on the on the you know on the uh, blacktop. I what happened to sandlot baseball? What happened to just getting together and everybody has a mitt and a ball and what happened? You know, that's a, that's a really good question uh, to backtrack just a second about the organized sports. Um, I mean, around here in Raleigh, maybe it is out there in California as well. Soccer is a big youth yes. sport. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I get why it's the most popular game in the world, because all you need is a ball and a field. I mean, you can play if, if you have a ball, you can play soccer virtually anywhere. Yeah. You know, you could play it in your house if you, if you wanted to. So um, uh, so I get that. I hate to say this, but I find soccer kind of uh, boring, but I'm told that that's because I don't really understand it. It's like, to me, it's just a lot of running. And I remember in high school when we did our two-week increments of different sports, you know, you did soccer for two weeks, you did track and field for two weeks, softball for two weeks, volleyball for two weeks, whatever it was. I used to dread soccer. Uh, to where I would just volunteer to be the the goalie, so I just didn't have to run up and down the field <laughs> constantly. <laughs> so, um, but as far as uh, in, it's like the kids are very involved in their sports, or they go the other way and they're just on their iPads yes. or phone all yeah, the they're time. They're gamers and they're not doing anything. Yeah, right. But Sandlot, I tell you. Uh, I was up in my hometown of Newport News, Virginia, not very long ago, and just remembering being in somebody's backyard or our backyard. My brother sent me a picture of us in our backyard, and he's pitching to me. And he's wearing a glove and stuff, but I'm sure we were using a tennis ball. We used to use a tennis ball instead of a real baseball. When yeah. I was a little guy, you know, somebody could, a bigger kid could have hit a line drive and killed me probably. So, but uh, we would use a tennis ball, but we were in the backyard and we were playing, you know, baseball of sorts. Uh, or touch football, never yep. played soccer. But yep. yeah, between football and, um, you know, pick up baseball games, I was doing that all the time. And something else, uh, in addition to like a tennis ball, and I think it used to be much bigger than it is. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I see it even in stores anymore, is wiffle ball. Oh, yeah. You remember the plastic bat and the plastic ball, and you could throw curve balls with that wiffle ball, and you could, you know, and uh, we yeah. would play we would play home run derby with a wiffle ball in my side yard. If you could hit it over a power line, that was a home run. So, you know, three pitches if you fouled or you know that's and that was your at bat. And uh, yeah. yeah, we would they, play home run derby. I'd play home run derby at a little league, league ball field with a softball when I got a little older with like two three buddies. Yeah. We just take turns and play a home so, run derby. Bill, did you have in in your area? Did you have those little red rubber balls made by Spalding? And, and we had them. We grew up in a urban art, and I relatively urban, my more suburban area, and so a, a hard baseball was dangerous. Right. We and the, these little red um, Spald. We call, I don't know why we called them the Spaldines because they they were made by a company called Spalding. Yeah, but it was Spaldine. ING, Spalding. I, we could never get, nobody ever pronounced the ING. It was right. Spaldines. Right, right. At any rate, they were cheap, and you could lose it over a fence or whatever, and you just right. go buy another one. Right. Um, but it was wonderful because if you didn't have a field, again, if you're a little more, more urban area, you didn't have a field or a parking lot, you could do it on a stoop. You could throw the ball against the steps, right. bounce it up like handball. Right, right. Bounce it back, and then it would be a single, double, whatever. And stoop ball was whether you used a, a broomstick as a bat or whether you used your hand, whatever it was. Stoop ball was the next best thing to right. baseball. Next right. best thing to sewer ball with a spalding. 
Okay, it's yeah, so wall as you go on the street. Oh and, my god! Uh, you pick out which car is first base, which is third base. Of course, yeah. you knew down the street was a home run if you could get it. Right. And right. So you you ran from sewer to car to yeah. whatever you called second base, yeah. and they came yeah. around. So that was a uh, sewer ball. Of course, you had to watch out for cars and stuff. But I don't know anybody ever got killed playing sewer ball because nobody ever chased it into the boulevard. It so, was I saw a thing the other day. If your childhood ever included someone yelling "car," yeah, then you had a good you had a good childhood. The wiffle yeah. ball thing you guys talking about the the pitching and against the stoop and stuff. We had a double garage when I grew up, and between the two garage doors was like a strip of bricks. Yeah, like just to separate them on the for the facade. Inside it was just a wooden wall. Um, and I would stand in the driveway, I, and I just drove by the house, and, and, and this memory came to me. And I would pitch, and if it hit those bricks, then that was a strike, given if it was in the strike zone. But, sure. I mean, back in the day, so I would pretend to be Sandy Koufax or Warren Spahn or, yeah. <laughs> you know, one of these guys, Jim Palmer or somebody. And, uh, I mean, I would do that for a long time. And I wonder if, when you're talking about, you know, first base is this, you know, the sewer pipe, and the second base is that forward fair lane over there, and the third base is this. I wonder if, and there's no way of measuring this, but I wonder if because of things like that, and we did adapt and kind of come up with our own things to while away the time, I wonder if maybe back in the day the kids were a tad more creative. I, I don't know. But it was like oh, we I had so. to be. We had to, you know, you had to go amuse yourself. We didn't have the hurricane, the hurricane, the, the uh, helicopter parents, you know, Billy, are you okay? What are you doing? Let me hear. Let me, it, it, I was out to play and I would yeah. leave in the morning. Now I went through a period of time where I was in the house reading all the time. Yeah. But then the next, next summer I was never there. I was up at the light. I was out playing tennis or going fishing with my buddies and I'd come home at dinner time. There yeah. was no cell phone. There was nobody worried about me. Um, it, it was just a different time. And I, and I suspect our parents looked at it and thought theirs was a better time. And, a, you know, so every generation has probably thought their time was the better time. Yeah. yeah. But the difference is, Bill, we're right. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, uh, you did leave out uh, a minor thing. When we were growing up, there were lots that you could actually go play sports in at the yeah. end of the street because it didn't have an apartment building or sh yeah, right. shopping center. Empty right. lots. And yeah. uh, I remember I remember my my son, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't share the story. I was playing, I must have been, I don't know, 11 or, or 10. And we, we did a pickup game. There were about you know, four people on each side. And we had bats and everybody brought a glove. And you shared gloves. And uh, we yeah. maybe had one ball among all of us. Uh, so you didn't want to lose that a hard ball. And uh, I was playing catcher. And I remember having stood up and a guy took a, a practice swing and I had two black eyes, two shiners. I, I literally, they were, they were shut. I wow. couldn't see for a week. Nobody sued anybody. I mean, you just, that's what happened. Right. It was about a, a, right. a week till I could actually see again. And uh, therefore, when I went to high school, I played a safe sport. I played a lineman on the football team because at least I knew when I was going to get in. <laughs> right. Well, before we came on, I mentioned to you guys, I mean, I thought Sandlot, I thought I was pretty good. I was a pretty good hitter and a fielder, and I could throw the ball, and I was fast. I was always fast, mm -hmm. which helped me playing outfield because I could I could run down. If a ball was in the air, uh, more than likely I would catch it. I mean, for whatever reason, I was just able to do that. But once I got into Little League with an official uniform and all that, yeah. I just became oh, a yeah. total klutz. Mm -hmm. It was like I could do nothing right. <laughs> it was, a, I don't know, it was a weird wake up call for me. So, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of that thing of no matter how good you think you are, there's somebody who's better. Right. And, and but, but thank you, uh, uh, as always, for bringing us back to our youth. Is that how you pronounce our it? Youth. Our youth. Our youth. Our youth. Yeah. Yeah. My cousin Vin is youth. Yeah. yeah. But great. anyway, you know, that, those those days were great and they're great to reminisce on it. And I do enjoy remembering the good stuff. And I find, you know, if you start thinking about the negative stuff, you got to, you got to reframe that and go to the go to the good. Sometimes I'll just tell my brain to go on a timeline for my career or whatever. But just troll for the good stuff. 
Just, you know, tell and tell myself that, because if you get locked on a bad thing, a bad experience you had or something you should have handled differently, you just got to get off of that. And just we've all got great, great memories. But, you know, that's the beauty of of growing older. We've got those and we've also still got our lives, which segues me into. And we can embrace the boomers. This is my whole this is my whole movement designed for baby boomers. Basically, instead of bemoaning the fact that we're getting older, you know, you know, getting older, it's tough and all this stuff. Live your life. Forget your age and embrace the boom. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.